Welcome everyone to the Q&A session for our upcoming course, The Matrix of Magic, the six month experiential intensive into deeper dimensions of healing beyond plant medicine. I'm Lisa Von Ace and I'm looking forward to this Q&A conversation for the Shift Network where we'll explore the teachings of David Crow and address questions about his upcoming six month course, The Matrix of Magic, which begins Wednesday, July 10th. Later, I'll explain how you can participate in this course even if you can't attend the live sessions, but first I want to introduce our guest. David Crow is one of the world's foremost experts and leading speakers in the field of botanical medicine and grassroots healthcare. He's a master herbalist, aromatherapist, and acupuncturist with over 30 years of experience, and he's an expert in the Ayurvedic and Chinese medical systems. David is a renowned author and the founding director of Floricopia Aromatic Treasures. David has presented his vision of grassroots healthcare, preservation of botanical medicines, and the use of plants for ecological restoration to hundreds of audiences, ranging from small private groups to conferences to a panel discussion with the Dalai Lama, broadcast internationally to millions of viewers. Through his visionary synthesis of medicine, ecology, and spirituality, he has helped transform the lives of thousands. And in just a few minutes, David will answer some of your questions, but first, I want to welcome David, who's going to begin our conversation by demonstrating how we can use specific herbs and oils in a contemplative way to experience the matrix of life force energies with us. Welcome, David. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, Lisa. It is always a pleasure. And thank you to everybody for joining us. And before we start with our little contemplative practice, just want to mention that once again, we have so many good questions that have come in and thank you to everybody for that and as always i have put the questions into larger groups so that we can uh, address a lot of things in a timely way so a lot of people have asked questions about their individual health concerns and i just want to say that this is not the best format for addressing these because a lot of these questions are really about very complicated chronic challenging health conditions that people have and i uh, i would love to be able to give some guidance but that's not really what this question and answer session is about it's really more directed to uh, specifically directed to what our course is about and so the answer that I always give in this situation is that if you have a complicated health condition, that the answer is yes, that herbs can be very beneficial for you, that herbs and essential oils, natural medicine, integrated therapies can be extremely beneficial. But you need to think of herbs in this particular context in a clinical medical situation. There's a lot of different ways we can use herbs. And for complicated health conditions, they should be used in a clinical context. And that means that you should be working with a skilled clinician who can give you an individual diagnosis. Now, that doesn't mean that this course isn't going to offer a lot of very useful information. There's going to be a lot of herbs and essential oils and dietary considerations also that we're going to be discussing over six months and we're going to be talking a lot about the uses of herbs. So there's a lot of health benefits in just approaching herbs on many levels. And so even though this course is not a specific training program for how to use herbs and essential oils, we're going to learn a lot. You will learn a lot about using herbs and essential oils. Now, the question then comes, well, how are we going to do this and what are we going to be using the herbs for? So those of you who were in the introductory course, the Matrix of Magic, the eight-week course, know that what we are doing is we are using herbs and essential oils to study the body. And in that process, we will learn about how the herbs and the essential oils work because we're going to be using them along with meditation so that we can really learn not just about 
the energies and elements of the body, but also the energies and elements of the herbs as well. So this is actually a fairly in-depth training about herbal medicine. It's just not how do you use herbs to treat these specific conditions. It's really how is the body working in terms of its subtle energies, chi and prana from classical Ayurvedic and uh, Chinese medicine, and how do the herbs influence the movement of the five elements, the earth, water, fire, air, space elements as defined by these classical Asian medical systems and, and other concepts like this. So there's three basic ways, and this is going to set the stage here for me to show you how we're actually going to do this with meditation. So first we're going to use herbs and oils to help us study specific energies and elements in the matrix of the body. Matrix meaning that the body is a container and it contains these elements that are moving through us all the time. Earth element is nutrients and water element as the fluids and fire element sunlight which is combusting in our cells as metabolic heat and oxygenation the air element are moving through channels of space. So that's a basic idea uh, with the word matrix. Now, how are we going to use herbs to study these energies and elements? And what are these uh, energies and elements? Well, first of all, we're going to be studying the definition of these energies and elements from classical Asian medicine. So you're also going to be learning a lot about these concepts like what is prana and what is chi and what are the five elements and what is soma, the influence of the moon, and what is Agni, the influence of the sun, and what is the mind stream, and how does it interface with matter. So these are very profound spiritual dimensions of classical Asian medicine, but they're also medical. And so I'll give you a very simple example. Let's just say that uh, we're talking about one type of chi or prana that's related to the lungs, lung chi in Chinese medicine, or the pranavata related uh, from Ayurvedic medicine. Well, we're using our pranavata all the time for breathing. We're using our lung chi all the time. But we don't identify it as a specific level of prana, one of many levels of prana. So how are we going to use herbs and essential oils? Well, first of all, we could uh, take a type of essential oil that goes directly to the respiratory system and these are going to be things like the conifer oils or eucalypti or things like that. And so we could take one of these essential oils and we could put it on a perfume strip like this and then we could do a meditation with it and we could inhale it very slowly. This is a Sierra juniper oil that Sarah and I distilled several years ago, which is getting better with age. And so this is one of the oils that opens the lungs. Now, any essential oil that has a direct effect on the respiratory system is immediately going to bring our awareness and our attention to the pranavata, to the lung chi. So we can breathe this in and we can use this first as a way of studying the respiratory prana. Okay, so this is the first simple method is that the herbs and the oils are going to bring our attention to the energies and elements in the matrix of the body. And another example, we could have something like Tulsi tea. Well, this is going to do the same thing if we drink it, it's just that it's going to work more slowly. So we're going to use herbs of different types. Essential oils are one extract of an herb, Tulsi is another extract of a different herb. And we can use these to influence the body's energies and elements in different ways. So that's the first way that we're going to learn about uh, using herbs to study the energies and elements of the body. Now the second dimension to this is that we're going to be learning a lot about the energies and the elements in the plants. So let's just say that we go back to this example of Tulsi and we are doing a meditation with the Tulsi, well, first of all, it's going to help our lungs. That's one direction that the energies and elements are moving. But another direction is that the um, herbs themselves have energies and elements in them. And so if the energies and elements are 
uh, in these herbs and we are ingesting them, then we're going to be able to taste and smell the different configurations and levels of energies and elements that are in the herbs as well. And so as we go through and we learn how to use these herbs and oils, we're going to start to notice a relationship. We're going to start to see the relationship between the plants and the human body. And so not only are we going to be using the herbs to help us understand the energies and elements in the body, but we're also going to be using the herbs to study them in a meditative way to learn about their energies and elements. Now, there's a third dimension to this, is that if we start using meditation, mindfulness, using these herbs and oils to study the elements in the body and using our meditation to study the elements in the plants, then this is going to take us to a very deep level of study, actually, of herbal medicine. And it's going to have several benefits besides the fact that all of these things are therapeutically beneficial for us. They're also going to increase our meditation power. And several people asked about this. I don't meditate very well. I don't have good attention. I have ADHD. Well, the herbs help us with concentration. And they give us also something to meditate on. We can meditate on fragrance. We can meditate on taste. We can meditate on the body sensations that these produce. And that helps us develop meditative power and concentration power. But it takes us to an even different level, which is that if we're using these, we're going to get health benefits as well. They're going to be generalized health benefits. But as I said at the very introduction, the very beginning, the answer is yes, herbal medicine can help you, even if we're using it in a generalized kind of way. So before I jump into the specific practice here, and I, um, which I already introduced briefly, but uh, before we jump into specific questions, I just want to sum up these objectives that we're going to be covering in the course. One is we want to learn the energies and elements of the body as described in classical Asian medicine. The second is that we want to study those energies and elements in a contemplative way using the herbs. And we want to learn about the energies and elements in the plants and how they affect our energies and elements. And out of that, we're also going to be improving our concentration and contemplative powers. And then we're going to be learning some practical applications because as we go, you're going to get a lot of verbal information here uh, at different levels. So that's um, just the brief intro here. And um, uh, several people asked about how do you make an online course like this experiential? They, they, several people have said, well, I studied herbs and <clears throat> they were online courses for learning herbs but we didn't actually do anything with herbs. And so it wasn't very hands-on and I didn't get a very satisfied experience from it. So this information is uh, hopefully going to answer that question for you is that yes, it's an online course, but you should have herbs and oils available. And that's why we're doing it in this particular format, this venue live streaming every week where we're going to gather as a community and we're going to have lecture and then some meditation together and then we're going to have some interaction. So as we go through the modules here, actually in module one, I just want to point out that to answer this question further, <clears throat> you're going to be getting a lot of files every week. You're going to get a file, a complete file on herbs and essential oils and foods that you should have available. Uh, that's how you're going to bring this information in so it's not just online. In order for it to be hands-on, you have to bring these things in so that they can be hands-on. But I know a lot of you don't actually have a lot of experience with preparing the herbs, how to do that. Uh, that's what we're going to cover in the first couple modules, especially module one. So you're also going to get a file how to prepare herbs in different forms from different forms. There's going to be making teas and using powders and using tinctures and so forth. You're going to get a file on the safe uses of essential oils, which is a very misunderstood subject. Unfortunately, we're going to be setting a lot of misconceptions and fraudulent marketing uh, straight. And we're going to be teaching everybody how to use essential oils very safely. Then we're also going to be covering where do you get all the herbs and the essential oils 
And then we're finally going to start to learn how to actually do things in a contemplative way, week by week by week. And that's going to include a lot of homework, actually. You're going to get deepening practices at the end of every class. Uh, things that you can do, you can go back and you can watch the video again, and then you can do the meditations because even though you might have things, and even though I'm going to tell you a week in advance, get this herb and get this oil, we're going to work with this. I know that time goes by very quickly in these classes, and so that's the advantage of having them recorded in video form is that you can come back and listen to them, watch them over and over again, and you can do them at your own speed when you have the herbs and the oils available. So let me just review here very briefly a few of the simple contemplative practices. So if we're using, if we're studying the different forms of prana and chi, we can use the herbs that go directly to those types of energies. And we can do that with elements also. So I gave you an example already. And uh, we, the way we can do this again is we just put the essential oil in a perfume strip. There's going to be a link available for you in the first module where you find these. This will be one of the basic methods that we're going to be using. So let's say that we're doing the contemplative aromatherapy practice and we're studying a type of prana. Now we can do it a couple different ways. One way, if we are contemplating the effect through the respiratory system, then we simply breathe it in. So we have a meditation, go into a lightly relaxed state, and then we simply breathe the oil. And what this is doing is this is ingesting the prana and chi of the plant through the respiratory system. Now we can do this for a lot of different kinds of things. We can do this to study the energies of the brain, the respiratory system, the circulatory system, our moods, mental states. There's many things we can study that are defined by classical Asian medicine as being different forms of energy that we can study by watching the breath. Now watching the breath is a classic ancient contemplative method, but if we add some fragrance to it, it does several things. One is it makes it more interesting. Second, it keeps us more awake. Third, it has a direct effect on the brain and helps us to concentrate more. So for those of you who are worried about being able to concentrate, this is one of the ways we can help ourselves become better meditators as we can use plants to help us concentrate. So this is one of the things that we will do. And there's a whole range of oils that we can do with this. The other is, as I mentioned, we can be drinking the tea, but it is slower acting. Now for the slower acting kinds of processes, I'm going to suggest in the week ahead, I'm going to suggest make this particular tea and drink it before class. Or we may have some tinctures available and we might have something like go to cola tincture and I might say, okay, now we're gonna do a longer meditation and let's go ahead and let's take a dropper full of go to cola tincture and a little bit of water. and Tinctures are relatively fast acting, so we're going to be able to ingest the tincture and then do a contemplative practice on a particular aspect of energy or element that we will actually be able to feel the brahmi, the go to cola, going to work within that five or 10 minutes while we're doing that practice and influencing that energy and element that we're studying. So that's one way. And that's in the first category of functions where we are using the plants to help us study. Now, another one is that we can use herbs and oils, again, in a very meditative way uh, to study the energies and elements in, in the plants, as I mentioned before. So the way that we can do this, I'm going to use vetiver oil here. Now, vetiver oil is from a root and it smells like earth. It's a beautiful fragrance and we can start by just putting some of this oil on the perfume strip again but this time when we do the contemplative practice the place that we start is we review all the different elements and energies that are in this oil and so when we go through we're going to remember oh yes there's sunlight and there's moonlight those are the overarching elements that are in all plants but then there's also uh, predominance of earth element and you can actually see it and you can smell it. It smells like dirt. 
And vetiver oil is an oil that will help us to study the earth element because it's such a wonderful form of the earth element and it's so easy to use and very safe. And so if we want to study the earth element and its effects on us through aromatherapy, then we will do a contemplative aromatherapy practice where we will go through and we will notice the different elements and energies that are in the fragrance because the fragrance is composed of molecules and the molecules are created by the plants according to the influences in the biosphere around them, the ecophysiology of the sun and the moon. You can smell them in the plants and you can taste them in the, in the teas from the plants. So fragrance and taste are actually expressions of ecological elements and energies that have been produced by the intelligence of individual species of plants. And so that's what we have here. The vetiver has a unique intelligence and that's a form of prana. And it has produced this oil mostly out of the dirt because its roots are very deep and that's where we get the oil. We get the oil from uh, the distilled roots. So when we study in a contemplative way like this, then uh, of course, I'm not going to be talking like this. We're going to be actually meditating and we will be able to feel and make a connection biologically to the plant because when we drink the tea, we are connected to it biologically. We have taken it into our body. It is now part of us. When we inhale the oil, same thing. We're connected to the plant. And when we connect with the plant and we know that it has certain kinds of energies and elements in it, we can learn to directly experience those energies and elements. And that will help us to understand what's in the plant. And then third, again, by doing that, we're going to start to notice this does this in my body. And gradually, week by week, what's going to happen is that you're going to develop a very intimate awareness of what these herbs and oils do. And this is not going to come from my telling you this herb is good for this, although I'm sure that I will mention what it's used for, but that's not the focus of the class. In other words, you're going to learn herbal medicine by studying the energies and elements in your body and observing how the plants influence those. And then you're going to learn about the energies and elements in the plants. And then you're going to learn about how they relate to each other. And this is actually a very deep level of herbal training. So for those of you who have no background in herbal medicine, this is a perfect place to start because it's going to give you a very holistic, energetic and elemental view, which is really where herbal medicine came from. Herbal medicine came from very ancient cultures before they had uh, gas chromatography and knew about molecules. They were doing it organoleptically. They were studying these effects of the tastes and smells on the body sensation. So we're learning herbs in a very classical, very ancient body-based level. So it's a great place to start. You don't actually have to have any background in, in herbology, but at the same time, I know that uh, a lot of you are practitioners and you do have a background in Chinese medicine, herbology, Western herbs, um, Ayurveda, and so forth. And I imagine that some of you have probably spent some time delving into this dimension, but I'll just speak for myself. The education that I got was very academic and very intellectual, not really body-based awareness type of approach. And so if you already have a background in herbal medicine, this will just take it deeper. So that's what we're going to do. And I know that I talked my way through this uh, contemplative practice rather than actually did a contemplative practice, but it's outlining how we're going to do it. And so that's the nature of this particular course. I basically just told you what we're going to be doing for six months. So I'm going to jump in and answer a few questions here because uh, we're going to have to have a short pause here in a little bit so Lisa can give us some more information about the course. But there were a number of questions about the details of how we're going to study herbs. Will you be getting a chart or a table on different methods of extracting herbs, for example? That's a, uh, one 
sample question. Um, no, we're not going to actually be making our own medicines. We're going to be using highly, um, very high quality products that I'm going to recommend. You're going to get a good source file uh, from trusted sources that I've worked with for many years clinically. And you're going to be using the finished products. Now, if you have herbs in your garden, that's great. If you know how to do extractions, that's great. But no, we're not going to be talking about how to distill essential oils. We're not going to be talking about how to make tinctures. This is not an herb class. Uh, it's about how to use products that are already uh, prepared. So I hope that clarifies the focus that we have. Now, I want to address some, some more uh, serious kinds of questions here about health and happiness. A lot of people send in questions about depression and anxiety and wanted to know how this class is going to be related. And I think this is really important because in a fundamental way, everything we do with natural medicine is related to our health and happiness and health is related to happiness and happiness is related to our health. So I just wanted to touch on a few things here that I was touched by. Uh, some people sent in some questions that I felt I wanted to take some time and talk about these things and explain these things, not so much as like I'm giving you answers, but I'm explaining them in the context of how this course might be helpful. So one of the simplest questions that really sums this up, somebody just sent in a question, how to be happy? Well, I think that's really, really the whole purpose why we're here. It's a fundamental question of human existence. And thank you for asking this in this question and answer session about this course. Now there's a lot of levels that we can discuss with this. And first of all, yes, herbs and essential oils can be very helpful with depression and anxiety. And meditation can also help. And doing them all together can also make us feel better. But we have to keep in mind that unhappiness, depression, and anxiety are really much bigger issues, and there's so many causes. And so we really have to look at a lot of other things, diet, and nutritional status, and lifestyle, exercise, how's our brain chemistry, all, the, all of these kind of things. These are things, again, that if you're having a serious problem with this, it really requires a, a clinical kind of approach, but the answer is yes, herbs can help. And yes, doing herbs in a meditative way like this will also help. But what are you going to get from this class? Well, there's a lot more to it than just using herbs for depression and anxiety. So first of all, we're going to be having a lot of discussion as we go through this. Why are we doing all of this? Why are we studying our own energies and elements? Why is that important? Now, I think that this is a very deep existential question. Who are we? That's what we're really asking here. Now, when you ask the question, how, do, how to be happy? It raised a lot of answers in my mind. And one of the first answers that came to my mind was, well, what's our definition of happiness? Because really, it made me realize that what a lot of people consider to be happiness is not really happiness. It's kind of a mixture of happiness and suffering. And I think that's part, partly normal for the human condition, but it's especially bad in our consumer media-driven culture. So things like wealth and romance and family and success and recognition and shopping and all these things. These are a lot of people's ideas of what will make them happy, but these are all forms of very superficial, temporary happiness mixed with suffering. So my answer is that I find that seeking happiness has more to do with a state of inner contentment and tranquility and sort of imperturbability, I would say, that becoming somewhat, uh, having more equanimity with the condition of the world is a, is a big factor. Now, of course, there's a lot of things that cause us unhappiness about what's happening in the world and politics and the suffering that's being caused everywhere so unnecessarily. We should have a human reaction to that. 
But we also need to differentiate whether we're having clinical depression, there's something that we need to do in terms of nutrition, all these kinds of things. But really, what this course is going to be offering is the opportunity to really study who we are at a deeper level. And so one of the things that uh, came to my mind as a response here is, in module two, we're going to be asking a basic question. What are we doing with these practices? Why meditate? What's the purpose? And we're going to immediately come to the answer which is given repeatedly in uh, spiritual teachings, and that is there is an ultimate spiritual goal. You could call it whatever you like, but it's frequently referred to as enlightenment. Well, what is that? Well, it turns out that there's no agreement about that. There's all these different viewpoints and expressions and forms and human experiences of what enlightenment is, but there does seem to be some kind of ultimate resolution to human suffering that we can attain. But first we have to ask, well, what is it? And what are we trying to do? So that's uh, what we're gonna focus on. And so the answer to your question here, well, I don't know what you need to be happy, but I do know that we all need to study at a deeper level spiritually to explore these things for ourselves. So module three also gives a very good answer. And this is uh, a module on the topic called Svastya. Okay, and Svastya means abiding in the self. Abiding in the self is actually, according to Ayurveda, one of the deepest definitions, one of the clearest definitions of the deepest state of well-being. Because if we are abiding in ourself, then we are very close to spirit. I think that answers the question in many ways. And thank you for asking that. It's uh, certainly thought-provoking for me, and I hope that this gives you a little overview of what we're getting into. Another question that I want to address here uh, that I was touched by, how will this information be useful for me as I have just lost my daughter and I am in mortal grief? Well, I'm very sorry uh, to hear about this. Now, times of extreme loss and grief, death of a loved one, or a near-death experience for ourselves, a critical illness, a terminal diagnosis. These are times when we are actually very close to spirit. And these are times when existential spiritual questions become very important to answer. And I can say that uh, I don't know if this course will be useful for you or not, but I believe that asking these existential questions and doing meditative practices to inquire about these existential questions is extremely useful in times of existential crisis, okay? Now, it's very good to do good things for yourself. And so I would encourage you to continue your education. If it's not this course, take a course you will enjoy. But I will also mention that it's very enjoyable and beneficial to use the herbs and the oils, and it's a good way to take care of our health. One of the things that's very important to realize is that when we um, lose a loved one, that we are not just experiencing grief and loss. We are actually experiencing the death of prana inside of us, okay? When somebody we are close to passes away, then a part of us goes with them, and that has a serious effect on our prana. Our life force goes with that person, and when our life force goes, then it leads to depletion of our vitality, which is normal. That's all part of grief. So we have to make sure that whatever we're doing, we're also doing our best to take care of our health, and we're doing our best to protect our prana. And several people asked along these lines, how do I take care of my prana? Well, that's one of the things we're going to learn in this course is what are the herbs and the oils that are going to benefit our prana? How do we take care of ourselves? We don't want to uh, become stagnant. We don't want to become self-destructive or debilitated by it. We need to move through it. And so that means we need to care for the life force as much as possible. And the plants help us 
The plants are there giving us their life force all the time. And so if nothing else, just having these plants around us, using aromatherapy in the form of meditative incenses. Several people asked about that. Yes, absolutely. Burn some frankincense, a little ritual for yourself every day. Put some sandalwood on a charcoal every day. Any of the types of healing rituals with aromatic ingredients, um, frankincense and myrrh and sandalwood and agar wood and copal and uh, what else is there? Palo Santo. All of these aromatic plants that have been used for spiritual purposes are very healing to the mind. And this is proven scientifically. There's an actual study showing that the inhalation of frankincense uh, fragrance actually has antidepressant and anti-anxiety kinds of effects clinically. So these are just a few things to think about that might be helpful for you. <clears throat> Take care of the life for your life force as much as possible. Take care of your spirit as much as possible. Plants can help us with all this. And finally, just a very specific answer here. It's very important for you to spend time with other mothers who have just lost their children also. Okay, so we're going to come back to many different kinds of diverse questions. But Lisa, I'm going to turn it over to you now. All right, great. Um, we do have time for David to answer a few more questions, but before we do that, I want to give a few details about his course. Uh, so those of you who are wondering, how do I do this? This is how. Uh, once again, it's called the Matrix, Matrix of Magic, and the URL for the website is matrixofmagicadvanced.com. Once again, that's matrixofmagicadvanced.com. Dot com. That's four words with no spaces in the middle. And that's where you can go for all the details and to register. Uh, and this is going to be a really powerful six-month journey under David's expert guidance where you'll unlock deeper dimensions of healing with major herbs and essential oils for strengthening and balancing your life force energies in your mind and in your body. Um, and this six-month course takes place on Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific, and it starts on Wednesday, July 10th. And if you can't join us live, that's fine. You won't miss any of the teachings. You'll receive audio and video recordings, transcripts, and all course handouts on your course homepage. And also, don't forget, the Shift Network offers a no-risk money-back guarantee on all of our courses, giving you a full two weeks until July 24th, in this case, to make sure that you absolutely love it. And as an added option, all participants are welcome to connect in a private Facebook community group so you can stay connected with one another. Also, everyone who registers receives the Matrix of Magic bonus collection. First, you'll receive three sessions with David from the Winter of Wellness Summit. Then you'll get an audio dialogue with Dr. Jill Stansbury and David Crow entitled Plant Intelligence. Next, you'll receive an audio dialogue with Matthew Wood and David Crow called Traditional Western Herbal Energetics. And you'll also receive a 20% discount from the Floricopia online store. And when you register tonight, Thursday, June 27th, by midnight Pacific, you'll receive an extra gift, and that is a two-part video training from David Crow entitled Treatment for Relaxing the Nervous System with Formulary Teaching for Stress and Anxiety. So before we get back to the questions, David, uh, why don't you share a little bit about what you're most looking forward to sharing in your upcoming course? Well, I like it all. <laughs> uh, actually, this course represents a synthesis of my favorite topics to study and teach and to share with people and that is herbal medicine and meditation and so i feel uh, very blessed and honored to have this opportunity to uh, bring these together and this is also somewhat unique here because um, normally these topics are taught separately this is actually something that is a, a little bit unusual about the way I like to study and use and teach herbology. And so this course is uh, an evolution for me personally uh, that has uh, taken place over uh, many years, long period of time, and it's bringing together many streams. It's bringing together classical Asian medicine, as I said, and it's bringing together the inner dimensions of classical Asian medicine. A lot of these things that we're going to be studying here are closely linked 
uh, to the yogic traditions, to Tantra, to Taoism, uh, to meditation lineages, because historically, classical Asian medicine was um, intimately woven together with the spiritual practices of the time and vice versa. So there was really no separation, actually, between the medical traditions and uh, the spiritual practices. Like, for example, Chinese medicine is completely entwined with Qigong, okay? Or Ayurveda is completely connected to uh, yoga and Tantra. So these things are woven together, but they have been separated uh, in our, over time, I think, both in the cultures they came from and also especially in our Western culture. So it's really a great honor to be able to bring these back together and present them in a very holistic kind of way. So that's my uh, greatest enjoyment uh, from doing this course. And also that we have the opportunity to do it in a kind of uh, community contemplative way now. Typically we do these classes in a pre-recorded audio format and then have a short question and answer live session afterwards. But this is going to be, we will all be streaming on the video and we will be able to stop after our practices and discuss how everybody uh, did with it and question and answer kind of as we go along. So it's much more interactive and I like that because it's very much like a, um, a virtual meditation retreat and I have always enjoyed for many years doing live events with people because of the interaction, the shared experience in present time. So those are a few of the things that I'm uh, really looking forward to and uh, very honored that I can do them here. Okay, wonderful. Well, before we get back to uh, the questions, let me mention once again, the name of the course is The Matrix of Magic. It begins Wednesday, July 10th, and you can log on to matrixofmagicadvanced.com for all the details and to register. So go for it, David. Answer some more questions for us. Okay, great. All right. Uh, so again, <clears throat> Several people asked about um, the feasibility of taking this program if they can't concentrate. Uh, several people were worried about being able to do this. And I understand entirely. Um, it's difficult for people to meditate. And it's difficult for people to um, meditate for longer periods of time, but we're not going to be doing long periods. We're going to be doing short meditation sessions. I would say probably 15 minutes is the longest we're going to do at any time. We're going to be doing it combined with herbs and oils, and that's going to help us also. So again, uh, the answer to that is yes, you will be able to do this, and you'll be able to do it as a review also. So this is something that you can keep coming back to. And several people were asking about the logistics, and I know that Lisa has touched on this, but I'll just mention it again. Here's, here's a question in that category. I will be out of the country for six months. Are these classes recorded so I can see them other than live streaming? Yes. And <clears throat> another related question is, um, this is amazing work. Well, thank you. I'm an environmental artist working with nature and the elements and have recently returned to my long-standing interest in plant medicine. As an ancient beginner with this material, I feel this power pack course will be a big challenge for me to process. Is there a way that I can start with a more foundational course? I would very much appreciate your advice and thank you so much. Well, thank you. And <clears throat> first of all, Yes, there's a lot of information here. There's a lot of information that you're going to get in the files. There's a lot of information in the lecture. And then there's the practices themselves. So yes, power packed. I guess that's a good way to describe it. It's information rich. But uh, is that going to be challenging for you? No. And the reason why is because, first of all, it's very accessible. and because you should think of this course as being a reference um, library of information. 
when you're done with this course, you're going to have hundreds and hundreds of pages of files. You're not going to read all of those in six months. Most of you won't. Uh, and I don't expect people to. And there's going to be 18 video sessions with the live format and question and answers throughout and at the end also. And so it's going to be very rich and the whole purpose of it is to make it very rich so that you can keep coming back to this for years and years and years. Now, the use of these herbs and oils will be good for you now and they will be good for you 10 years from now and 20 years from now. And as a matter of fact, I can say that 10 and 20 years from now, you're probably going to need them even more. Uh, we're all going to need herbs and oils more as we get older. And we're all going to need meditation more as we get older. And we're also going to probably, I would say that uh, everybody in this group is, because you already have this interest, these kind of existential questions about spirituality are going to become increasingly important. I'll just speak for myself and say that as I get older, they become increasingly important. So the course is there for you for the rest of your life. And that's really why I like it to be information rich. It's not to overwhelm you. It's so that you can come back to it over and over again. And most likely, if you come back to it next year, it's going to have a whole new level of meaning. You're going to discover all kinds of things you didn't catch the first time around and so forth. Okay, so Lisa, do I have time to just go through a couple of uh, quick technical questions about herbs? Absolutely. We've got about 15 minutes left. Okay, great. All right, so now we have uh, questions that are really related to uh, herbs and oils specifically. Since a lot of these did come in, I just want to answer a few of them. So I've heard that turmeric CO2 extract does not cause stomach irritation in susceptible individuals, where a steam distilled turmeric may cause stomach irritation. Do you have an opinion on the two forms of turmeric essential oil? Many thanks for the work you do. Well, first, you are most welcome. Now, the reason that I'm uh, answering this question here <clears throat> is because there are a lot of questions like this that do come up during the course because we are introducing a lot of herbs and a lot of essential oils and because people do need guidance with it. But at the same time, this is not an herb or aromatherapy course. It's a course to use herbs and aromatherapy to study the body. And it's a course to use meditation to study the herbs and essential oils. But at the same time, these kind of questions will be there. So the simple answer is neither. You should not ingest turmeric essential oil. And as a matter of fact, you shouldn't ingest essential oils at all. And of course, a hundred people are going to ask, but I have heard you can take essential oils internally. This is going to be one of the first topics we're going to cover in module one, and I'm going to give you a link to what's called the essential oil injury database. And that's self-explanatory. Essential oils are the most concentrated form of botanical medicine. And they have come into our culture at this particular time through multi-level marketing. That's a bad combination, okay? Uh, imagine if your doctor was selling um, antidepressants, you know, through multi-level marketing. Well, they would be trying to get everybody to take these things, right? Well, essential oils need to be used very carefully and safely and wisely. And thousands and thousands, it's an epidemic, okay, of injuries are happening. Every, everywhere from people, permanent esophageal damage from drinking the lemon oil on water every day. That's a common recommendation. Uh, burning their children, putting the oregano oil directly on the skin because they heard it's good for immunity killing their pets. I mean, this is really, really serious. So it's my responsibility as a clinician to tell you don't do this and how to do it correctly. So we can use essential oils. We should be able to use essential oils. They're a very important aspect of natural medicine, but mixing it with marketing is not the way to go. It's the, in, it's, it's the wrong way to go because then the priority becomes selling, which means 
encouraging people to consume them in all kinds of ways. Drink them, pour them all over you, pour them in your food. I mean, it's not safe, it's not wise, it's not clinical. You're risking your own health and the health of others to do that. So that's my answer. And so another answer with this is why would you even want to take turmeric essential oil internally when you have turmeric in so many other forms? I mean, the best way to take turmeric is to use it in your cooking. It's biocompatible, all right? That's how we think about it. The best way to use turmeric is every day as a culinary herb and spice. So if you're gonna take an essential oil of turmeric, just imagine that you, if you're consuming some drops of turmeric essential oil, you're consuming, you're consuming like a whole handful of chopped roots every time you do it. Or if you do that little trick where you put the three drops of lemon oil on water and you drink that a couple times a day, it's like, why do you wanna eat 10 lemons? It's not good for your stomach, okay? So these are common sense kinds of things that um, apparently is becoming less common or something. And so I'm going to be covering this in uh, module one. So here's a good question, and it goes back to one of the earlier topics. Are there essential oils, herbs, smudge, incense, et cetera, et cetera to enhance meditation, especially for health and happiness? Yes. and. I gave a few examples, frankincense, sandalwood again, agarwood, um, palo santo. And we can use this in the traditional form, which is always nice because we can make a ritual out of it. We can light a charcoal and put it on a traditional incense burner, and then we can have a little meditation burning the raw plant material. That's a very nice way to do it. But these aromatic substances are also found in essential oils that we can put in a diffuser, or we can take certain compounds, like for example, sandalwood is actually one of the few oils that's relatively safe to apply directly to the skin. It's actually good for your skin. There's a few exceptions to that rule. Don't put it all over you, okay? Sandalwood's good, and you're not gonna be prone to doing it because it's so expensive, but sandalwood's nice because you can put one drop on your fingertips, and you can actually just inhale it like this. And it's a beautiful, beautiful way to meditate in a kind of ritualistic way. Or there are compounds called atars, atars which uh, include flowers like rose atar and uh, agarwood and so forth, or vetiver atar is there also. These can be used for anointing yourself. Now, anointing yourself is a very nice healing method, or you can have others anoint you and you can anoint others. It's a nice way of blessing yourself and others that has always been part of human history. It's good for the spirit, it's good for the soul, it's good for the mind and the heart. It's good for people who are grieving and it's good for depression and anxiety. So there's ways that we can use all of these sacred substances, these sacred scents, uh, sacred herbs for healing the mind and healing the spirit and spiritual practice is for healing the mind and healing the spirit also. Meditation, prayer, uh, contemplative practice, vision quest, all of these things have always been deeply entwined with these kind of aromatic plants. So, yes. Now, uh, several people asked about uh, what are the five elements and what are we going to learn and how, are, how do they affect us? Uh, people were asking about prana and chi. Uh, the short answer here to all of these questions is yes, we are going to be studying them. And we're going to be studying them in quite a lot of detail experientially and intellectually, academically with some lecture and with some files. And then we're going to be tasting the prana and the chi and we're going to be smelling the prana and the chi and we're going to be tasting and smelling the five elements. So uh, there's quite a lot of information. So that's uh, not something that I can explain in a short time. It actually takes hours and hours to, to study this. So we're going to be getting into a lot of it. Okay, I see this is a good place for me to pause or possibly wrap things up. And so Lisa, I'll turn it back to you. And after that, if there's any more time, there's maybe a one or two more I can do here. Okay, well, we are about out of time. Do you want to do just one more quick one? Sure, I'll just do the one that's right here in front of me. And uh, it's actually along the same lines as some of the other things. 
Um, a couple of people asked, can medicinal plants uh, really help us with our spiritual development? And uh, one person was asking specifically about whether essential oils can. <clears throat> and so first of all, I think by now you've probably uh, had this question answered, but I'll just answer it again, because this is really uh, very central to the theme of the course also. And like a lot of things, when people ask me questions, the first response I always have is I ask another question, because there's a lot of things that people hear about, they think about, they talk about, and <clears throat> unless we clearly define them, we uh, have difficulty answering it in a clear way. So people have asked here also, what about frequencies of essential oils? Well, in order to answer that, we have to know what do we mean by frequencies, because there's a lot of definitions of frequencies, okay? And it turns out that people don't really know what frequency actually means scientifically. It's a concept, it's kind of a new age sort of idea that certain things have frequencies and they're promoted by marketing. This product has higher frequencies, okay, this kind of thing. But herbs and oils don't really have frequencies in that particular way. They have intelligence and they have qualities and they have energies and elements. And they have uh, quality in the product also. They have freshness or staleness and they, they have purity or contamination. That's how we think about the um, uh, vibrations, as it were, okay, of medicinal plants. It's, it's a, a little bit more science-based. It's a little bit more based in classical Asian medicine. And so going back to this question, uh, how can these plants help us with our spiritual development? The first question I ask is, well, what is spiritual development? What does that mean to you? And what should it mean to us? And there's all kinds of ways we can answer that. And a lot of it is culturally based. And there's a lot of answers that are available all over the world from, from different traditions. And probably if I went through an extensive list of, of my definitions, you would probably agree, yes, I, I think that's an example of spiritual development also, okay? We probably agree on a lot of these kind of things. But I will mention that um, since you're asking, can these plants help us with our spiritual development? Uh, the first thing I thought of was, yes, of course, but actually everything can, you see. Pain and adversity can help us with our spiritual development as well, as I've touched on. But all plants can. So for example, uh, you, I am sure everybody here <clears throat> knows that there is a significant difference in high quality organic food versus highly processed food. And I'm sure you know that that has a huge impact on our brain function, and that has a huge impact on our moods and our mental states, and that's directly related <clears throat> to what we could call spiritual development. In other words, our spiritual development at some level is supported by good health. And so if we're using high quality plants, that's supporting our journey. That doesn't mean that we can't be spiritual when we're sick, because many people, when they are sick, they become deeply, deeply spiritual just out of necessity because of pain and suffering. So it, there's not a clear correlation. But healing can be very symptomatic, or healing can be very, very spiritual. Using plants can be very symptomatic. We can just take herbs purely on a symptomatic basis, purely allopathically. Or we can have a spiritual relationship with these plants, and that's what this course is about. This course is all about being intimately, mindfully, spiritually connected to the plants, going both ways, that we're paying attention to these plants. That means we're plant paying attention to nature. And we are paying attention to what they are doing in us. And so that's a deeply spiritual process, in my opinion. We're reconnecting with nature biologically through our awareness. So that's one definition of spiritual development that I like, is that we're in intimacy. We're reconnecting a kind of intimacy biologically through our senses, through our body sensations, through the energies and elements in the body, to the plants. And that's how we come in contact with nature. It's nice to be outside, of course, but every time we eat, 
we're connecting to nature. Every time we breathe, we're connecting to nature. And so if we want to have a sacred relationship with nature, it starts right now with what we're doing with our mind and what we're doing with our senses and whether we're paying attention and appreciating what we're putting in our mouth and eating and drinking and breathing and so forth. So we can have a spiritual relationship with plants or not. We could just eat mindlessly and uh, we could just take herbs purely allopathically. Oh, I heard that this will get rid of my inflammation, okay? But the deeper we go in the relationship, it's interesting because the more powerful the effect becomes actually. So we're going to explore that. So Lisa, I will wrap things up with that and turn it back to you. All right, wonderful. Thank you. As usual, David, this has been a truly informative hour. Uh, I wanna thank our viewers for being with us today and for all of your questions. Once again, The Matrix of Magic starts Wednesday, July 10th. And again, you can visit matrixofmagicadvanced.com to learn more and to register. And David, I want to thank you once again. It's been such a pleasure being with you today. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you to everybody for joining us. All right. Yes. And once again, I'd like to thank everyone who joined us on behalf of all of us at the Shift Network. I wish you well and look forward to having you on this course or perhaps another one in the future. Have a great night, everyone. <laughs>